after the withdrawal from Gallipoli around about Christmas time 1915, what was left of the Australian and New Zealand forces were brought back here to Egypt. And here they were met by thousands of new drafts who had signed up in Australia on hearing about the slaughter in Gallipoli. Now these guys were called the Fair Dinkums because they went away to war without some illusion of grandeur and adventure. These guys signed up for modern warfare that they had already heard now about the horrors that it was going to bring to them. They were then rearranged into three divisions of infantry and artillery and four brigades of light horse. Now the infantry and artillery all went to France and with them went the 13th Regiment of the Light Horse and part of the 4th. They were all going to the trenches of the Western Front to fight the Germans. But the remainder, all of the Light Horse, stayed here in Egypt to take on their old respected enemy from Gallipoli, who they now call Johnny Turk. I think there's, there's undoubtedly a strong sense of romance associated with, uh, with horse troops in general. Uh, cavalry always seems to, to, to garner a fair bit of attention in, in a lot of ways. I think it reflects a sense that the light horseman in a way is the stereotypical bushman. Yeah. Um, and in, in, in a sense he can almost be portrayed as the, as the archetype or the, the, the best kind of example of a bushman soldier or war. Mm. I mean there's a lot of mythology in that but uh, I think that's one of the reasons why the, the enduring um, interest in it, and as I said, it ties in with romanticism. It was also during this time that four brand new battalions were formed and called the Imperial Camel Corps. When they'd been formed, the sort of word had gone around the AIF, we need men for the Camel Corps, and when they, in those sorts of situations, uh, battalion commanders and what have you will often make an effort to get rid of some of their more troublesome members. Uh, a lot of them ended up in the Camel Corps. No, that's not to say all of them were. For example, quite a few West Australians went over from a West Australian battalion because they'd actually had experience with using cavils before the war in Western Australia. But they were a bit of a minority. Uh, but ultimately, the, the, camel, the reinforcements just came from the general AIF pool, so they weren't necessarily all roughhouses. Probably the first, maybe the first, the first ones first that went 10%. across, the first 10%, and after that, they were probably no worse than anyone else in the AIF. It was mid-1916 when the Ottoman army made their push towards Egypt. This meant crossing the northern Sinai Desert, but they were met by a revengeful Allied force, and over the next 12 months the battles raged as the Turks were pushed back across the Sinai towards Palestine. The major city that blocked the Allies' way into Palestine was Gaza, and it proved a formidable stronghold, defying two major attacks by Allied forces. During the first of these, light horse troopers actually made it into the back door of the city, but they were commanded to withdraw because the leadership were uncertain of victory. After the two failed attempts to capture this strategic city, the commander-in-chief of the Allied forces, Sir Archibald Murray, was sacked and replaced by Sir Edmund Allenby, straight from the Western Front. Allenby was known for his mad anger and hard judgments, but under the circumstances, he proved to have just the right temperament and strategies to break the deadlock. He devised a plan, as would be his trademark for the rest of the war, to bluff the Turks and their German oversight into believing an attack would fall in one place when it was really going to fall in another.